here's a blast from the past. This is a project I did back in 2004 and I just went through a spell of building loads of these units using very early gallium nitride LEDs. It's when they just became affordable, they were selling them from companies like BHK. In fact, one of these had BHK in it. BHK, Best Hong Kong, who were selling the bulk LEDs on eBay at an affordable price. I mean, they were basically dumpster LEDs but you know at the time it was pretty good uh, I can demonstrate just how dumpster they were oh before I go do that though uh, this LED panel is there any flicker you're not seeing any flicker it should be a bit of flicker there's no smoothing uh, it's drawing almost seven watts of power uh, 29 milliamps and a power factor of 0.9 because it was a resistive current limiter to these they also get quite warm that's not really surprising. And in the case of this one, well, let me plug it in. Let me find its plug for a start. This was the super slim panel version uh, with all the circuitry in the back. And uh, it is looking a bit sad. Uh, some of the LEDs are out. The other ones have actually changed colour. These might have been Chai Wing, uh, which was another eBay seller. Equally crap LEDs, but hey, it's what we had at the time. That's very shiny, isn't it? Uh, this thing projects a nice beam, and you might not think that's very bright. It is drawing, in this case, about 5 watts, and when I point it at a wall, it projects a very visible beam of light. It's very bright. And that's why I use these. I was partly using them to test the LEDs, but I was also making... Uh, decorative lights that could just be left on all the time. Well, these kind of it showed a bit of heat problems, but uh, it also you put it behind furnishings and it just splashed light up. There's no uh, smoothie in these, uh, so I'm quite surprised it's not showing ripple in the camera. I shall plug in some random ones here. That's uh, I'm not sure if that's. I think that is blue. Uh, one of them is ultraviolet. I think. It's this one was ultraviolet. Yeah, it is, because uh, it was early ultraviolet LEDs, the near ultraviolet, a very deep blue. And uh, this one does make things fluoresce quite brightly. But anyway, let's explore the circuitry. Let's open some of them and see what I was up to 18 years ago, which is quite some time ago. It seems to have flown by very quickly. So I'll show you the schematic of these first. It's very, very simple. Uh, it is... A bridge rectifier, I'll just zoom down onto that. Uh, mains coming in, in this case 240 volts, uh, AC, coming in, going through a discrete bridge rectifier, then just resistors to limit the current, and then the LEDs. And that's very much like modern LED lamps that use the linear current regulator. But in this case, because it was just resistors, if you get too close to the uh, mains voltage with the LEDs. If you get too many LEDs, it means that any slight voltage fluctuation causes them to change in intensity. You see that with some of the cheaper LED lamps. Let's open some of these up. Where's a suitable screwdriver? There is a suitable screwdriver. It's nice looking back on projects like this just to see what I was up to. Sometimes I feel like revisiting them, especially with the possibility of uh, using 3D printed cases these days. These ones are Hammond cases made in uh, Canada. This this light is warm. That's quite snugly warm. I made a red one of these and gave it to my brother as a heated therapy lamp that he could use on his uh, sore shoulder from lifting coffins, which is what he did. So this one I called it Gallium. Can I use that name a lot? This one has a satellite circuit board with the bridge rectifier on it and then just three 1K resistors rated 2 watts each. I don't know what they were actually being used at. Hmm. But that would have been basically 6 watts worth of power rating, although I wouldn't use a resistor, a 2 watt resistor anywhere near 2 watts. I would say they were well under 1 watt dissipation each because most of the voltage was being dropped across the LEDs. Uh, let me work this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 times 6, 60 LEDs. That'd be about 180 volts being dropped across that. So really the voltage being dropped, the RMS voltage being dropped across the resistors was only about 60 volts. 20 volts each, 20 milliamps, 1K. That's, that fits in perfectly for this. Let's take a look at 
this one which is different. I went through quite a few revisions at that time. With surface mount components, this suddenly makes it very viable for revisiting this project because there's a lot to be said for the simplicity of just resistors and LEDs, particularly if you were to add in a bit of simple two transistor circuitry to make a linear current regulator. It wouldn't have to be too fancy. So what we've got here, we've got uh, included a fusible resistor. Wow, a 100 ohm resistor uh, before the bridge rectifier and then the rectified AC coming down, Clive 2004, to the circuit board which has resistors interspersed along here. That one is a zero ohm resistor. So, uh, and this one down here. So I was fine tuning the resistor values just like they do in modern lamps. That's kind of interesting. Um, and in this case, the resistors were mounted through holes, but they were soldered in before the LEDs and then the leads cropped so you can't actually get your fingers in to touch those bare leads. Interesting. So this one is another one of these. This one is another one of the this type, but this one has got locking nuts on it. Right, tell you what, one moment please, I'm just going to pause while I take these off so we can take a look at the circuit board. Okay, let's get closer to this one. This one had the bridge rectifier on the back and then the resistors in between the LEDs again, but because these holes are coming all the way through, to make sure the leads didn't protrude through too far, I can remember this, uh, I formed the diodes but then crop the leads so that they just barely poked halfway through the circuit board so you couldn't make contact at the back. Not perfectly ideal. This is where the surface mount uh, M7 type diodes are probably quite good. But again, in this case, it's a uh, value of those. I think it's 220 ohm. 220 ohm resistors. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's roughly making the 1K again, isn't it? So it's a very standardized value. Pretty good. Uh, these worked well. Uh, these days, if I was revisiting it, let's bring in the schematic again. I might add an electrolytic capacitor across here because that would potentially reduce the flicker. Might pop a little inrush limiting resistor there. Uh, definitely a discharge resistor across that capacitor. And then nudge, either add more LEDs or more resistors, probably more LEDs to use the higher voltage uh, because whereas it's 240 volt RMS it would have been about 330 volts so maybe I'd have gone for the best part of like 100 LEDs uh, for that but interesting project, very interesting I do strongly get the urge to revisit this again because they worked pretty well I did push some of the LEDs quite hard in these, partly because companies like BHK were saying the modern LEDs can take 30 milliamps. In reality, no, they couldn't. Uh, you're better actually sticking down to about 15 milliamps, so I would well underrun them. So I use higher value resistors. But pretty neat. Yep, I think I need to revisit that project again because uh, it was good. I liked that project at the time. I made lots of them. As you can see, these are just a few of the ones I made. Note that uh, this is the lid for that case, so double value. Uh, some of them were built into the box and some of them were just built into the lid. Pretty good. Yeah, definitely worth a revisit.